House Republicans have already launched a push to turn back the clock on health care reform, the new law, even though any repeal effort would almost certainly fail in the Senate, even if it went through the Senate, the president would almost certainly would certainly veto it as well. Let's discuss what's going on with two members of Congress, Republican Congressman Steve King of Iowa and Democratic Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz of Florida. Thanks uh, to both of you, you very much for coming in. Since you really have no chance of repealing health care reform, why bother now instead of getting to jobs? Well, we're probably, I think we have every chance of getting it repealed. In the House. In the House and sending it to the Senate where the pressure will build. And this isn't all about repealing it in one bill and one motion. This is the first step in a long, hard slog. It's the beginning of the beginning to repeal if, Obamacare. If, if it were to be repealed in the Senate, the president would veto it. Mm -hmm. Do you have a two-thirds majority to override a presidential veto in not only the House, but in the Senate? Well, we'll learn that in the House on, on January 12th when we bring up the repeal bill. But whether we do or whether we don't, we will have people on record. And when they're on record, then they stick with their convictions. As we march through the effort to cut off the funding that would be used to implement or enforce Obamacare at every step along the way, all the way through 2011 and 2012, but the end game is elect a president who will sign the repeal of Obamacare. The Republicans promised they would do it. They're living up to their promise. What's wrong with that? Because this is a Republican obsession with repealing health care reform. They are engaging starting tomorrow in the ultimate in hypocrisy. They talked about the importance of creating jobs and reducing the deficit. Tomorrow when they pursue, fruitlessly pursue repealing health care reform, they will explode the deficit if they are successful, which I don't think they will be. It will add $143 billion in the first 10 years to the deficit and a trillion in the second 10 years. And in, instead of creating jobs, it will actually reduce jobs. In December, Wolf, the jobs report showed that the biggest increase in an industry for, for job creation was in the health care sector. Go ahead, Congressman. Well, uh, they, we're going to see a new CBO score on this. Things have changed. This, this is a job congressional killing. budget off. This is the one that the, the numbers mm -hmm. that she was pointing to saying that this health care reform law will actually cut the long-term debt. And, and that's if you make some assumptions such as there's $532 billion worth of cuts to Medicare and a number of other assumptions in order to get the score barely squeaked in, just barely in the black. That's what happened in order to draft Obamacare in the first place. But we're in a new economic environment. We can't be creating jobs by growing government spending. This is a job-killing Obamacare bill, and the result of repealing Obamacare will be grow the private sector economy. I want to move on, but go ahead and respond economy. to that. What, what repeal, trying to repeal health care reform it means is that every, every minute that the Republicans spend trying to do that is one less minute we're focused on creating jobs and turning the economy around. That means that we're also going to put insurance companies back in the driver's seat and add prescription drug costs for seniors, deny people the ability to have insurance if they have a pre-existing condition, put, put, uh, take young adults off their parents' insurance. This is going to harm people gravely. Uh, there's a new freshman congressman uh, from Illinois. His name is Joe Walsh, uh, and he says he is not going to accept the federal government's health insurance program for himself, even though his wife has some pre-existing conditions because he thinks to accept the federal government's health insurance program would be hypocritical. Do you accept the federal government's health insurance program for yourself? Well, I'm on it now, like other federal employees are, so I don't intend to pull off of it, but I give Joe a lot of credit for that. I went to Chicago to help him in the campaign, and I give him a lot of credit for standing on this principle. So, but but as, as we see this, Debbie has mentioned a number of things. I think she's listed everything that people might be good about Obamacare, including 26-year-old <laughs> insurance. And uh, we've got two members of Congress that were elected under that age that could have come in under Obamacare on their parents' insurance. So that's one thing that I don't support although others do. Pre-existing conditions can be handled at the state level with some federal support. We intend to follow through and do that, but we can't leave a minor component of Obamacare in place because it will metastasize like a malignant tumor. Assuming the Republicans fail in getting the whole thing repealed, and by all accounts they will, what if they simply try to improve it? Are you ready to work with the Republicans to improve this law? We've always been open to suggestions about how we can improve the health care reform. And Give me an example of what you would change. Well, one of the things that we need to change is that there's a 1099 provision that we've all agreed what was uh, was something that, that is burdensome for small businesses, and we need to make sure that we change that. And there are some other things, but we need to sit down at the table together. Instead of wasting time trying to make something happen that's not going to happen, we need to get together, find some common ground, and move forward together on like trying to cover. Do you like the fact that children uh, can now stay on their parents' insurance policies until age 26? No. Would you repeal that? And I would. Any state that wants to set that policy can and some have. We don't need to do that at the federal level with a federal mandate. Federal mandates drive up costs. It's not a one-size-fits-all. 
Well, what's really bad about Obamacare, the economics of it, the cost, the loss of, the loss of access, the list goes on. But what doesn't get said is what happens to the American spirit. This bill expands the dependency class in America. We're an independent people. We're a vibrant people. We're the cream of the crop of every donor civilization on the planet. We have too much vigor in Americans to be submitting to Obamacare. This is how extreme the Republicans are that are in the majority in the House now. They would deny health care coverage to kids with pre-existing conditions, deny people who are kids, young adults who are 26 years old. A woman in my district woke last, uh, a few weeks ago came up to me in the supermarket and said, Debbie, thank you so much for passing health care reform. You saved me $3,000 last year because I was able to put my two adult daughters back on my insurance. These are, these are young adults who, it, they are one illness away from being bankrupt. They would put insurance companies back in control of health care decisions, and we've made sure that, that those decisions are between doctors and their patients. So even if uh, this new law says you can't... Uh deny people coverage if they get very, very sick. You think you would want to repeal that as well? We will deal with pre-existing conditions. In Not pre-existing, but if you get very sick, they could take you off the health insurance policy, and except that, this new law prevents that. That, that can also be dealt with in a, within the states with some federal support, and that's how we should be doing this in a constitutional way. This bill is unconstitutional. It can't be afforded. It diminishes the quality, and it increases the cost. And it's not a bill that's suitable for American people, not us vigorous, free enterprise people that believe in the Constitution. Very quickly. This bill is a sound private sector reform that makes sure that we added 32 million people who didn't have coverage, that cuts the deficit dramatically, that creates jobs, and makes sure that people who are sick have an opportunity to get coverage so that they don't get sicker. We've heard a little bit of the debate that we're going to be seeing over the next week on the floor of the House of Representatives. Uh, guys, thanks very much for coming in. Good Thank luck you. to both of you. Congratulations to both of you on getting reelected.